All right, we are in week 17 to 20 stage and Lindsay has now progressed to the plank, the side plank. And we're gonna show you that because this exercise teaches you how to remain stable in your core and rotate, especially when you're doing harder exercises like the torsionator or any cable or band type rotation movements, which we'll show you. But the exercise that helps you strengthen up is this one. So we're going from a plank to a side plank. And what you're trying to do, we'll just make Lindsay just plank here for a minute, make a sweat. She's, remember, she's got a disc injury. She's recovering well, she's still got a bit of stiffness, but she's functioning in her core really well. And so we need to get her rotation very good because what I don't want Lindsay doing is separating, okay? So when she rotates, I don't want her going, okay, hips or shoulders moving away. I want that core to keep her hips and her shoulders together. And therefore, because she's got ball and socket joints here, that's what she pivots on, all right? So from going from a full plank here, she's going to go into a side plank. So if she does that, if you notice that, she moved her hips first, so let's try that again. So let's do that again. If you watch, if this hip moves first, there, see that? I don't want that happening. So when she goes into a side plank, she's got to actually tighten up in here that when she lifts her, when she moves her hips, her arms got to lift. There we go at the same time. So she goes in a side plank, there's her side plank, and then she rotates down. So when she hits the ground again, her hip is down. So she then has to practice making sure that those hips don't move first or move last. Let's go the other way for me, Lindsay. So when she comes forward, the hips come down and the arm comes down. And she comes this way, yep, that's it. Coming up and coming down. Because if she rotates and twists, she's not learning core stability in a plank and side plank position. She's breaking between the two. So we have to make sure that she gets this really well. Do you want to have a rest? <laughs> she may have to make that, uh, does that really well. So tips away with that. Make sure your core is tightened and on, and you really have to actually think about it and start slowly lifting rather than just launching into it. So do you want to go again for me? Mm -hmm. So she has to think, okay, I can't let that move without this moving. That's it. And then those two rotate and go together. So you don't have to hold the side plank for very long because the aim is to rotate between the two. So you are holding a plank for a long period of time, but you're alternating in between the two. Okay, so just make sure you're not separating when you rotate. You have to think about that one. So let's use that principle to show you what you need to do on a torsionator. So have a jump up. So this one here, which we prepared earlier, is a torsionator. So in this movement, I'll show you. Yes, yeah, you, Lindsay, you show me. I'll show you what I don't want disc people doing with a torsionator. So what you're not allowed to do is move your upper body and leave your hips behind. Okay, so she, if she does that, she's twisting her upper body and her hips aren't doing anything. So she's getting a rotation force through her disc under load, which we don't want. We want her core stability, so her core remaining solid, so when she moves the torsionator, her hips have to move too. Okay, so therefore, she has to pivot on her toes, she has to keep her knees bent, and everything needs to be active. Quads, glutes, hammies, okay? And her focus is, can I tighten this up so I can keep my upper body connected to my lower body? That's what it's for, under load, okay? Now remember, when you're not under load and you're reaching, grabbing things, that's fine. But when she's training, especially if she puts more weight on this, she has to learn that it, she cannot separate left and right and she's doing quite well at that she's learning well and it's hard isn't it and i think a lot of it's hard it's harder technical than it is load so once you've got the technical aspect then you can add the load for more strengthening and this is great you know she's standing she's on a bit of an angle she's in neutral spine there's nothing wrong with her discs as long as you don't separate and rotate in the spine you rotate you pivot through here here and here go again so it looks like that and as she gets better, she's going to be more and more solid with that. So that's the torsionator thing. Now, some people use cables as well for rotation, for torsional rotation control. So drop that down, Lizzie. So come over here. We've got a band, like a power band instead of cable. So 
Normally, people, what I see people doing is they, again, rotate the upper body and leave their hips behind. So a bad thing for people to do would be this, so keeping and doing that, okay? Yes, you rotate in your obliques, that, but for Lindsay, who's a disc client, doesn't want that happening, we have to teach you to rotate. So she's now going to do what she did in the torsonator and try and rotate that way. And there's a lot more core stability mechanisms going on there because you're on your toes, it's harder, right? And it's a lot more sport and functional related. So it's better for her anyway, athletic wise. Balance. Yeah, okay. and balance. Good, of course. And of course you'd go one way and then obviously you'd go the other way as well. All right, so come in here. So from the back, you're trying to make sure this does not separate, okay? So she, when she rotates and faces that way, her back is moved. That's great, and actually it's really good work for here. Nice static control work, which is exactly what we want. So that's how you do rotation work under load when you're a disc patient.